Hi y'all, Karma here. Today we're going to learn, be learning all about the herb yarrow as featured in the August 2022 number 14 box of Apothecary Monthly. So the information that you'll be getting in this video will be coming from this booklet, but I won't be sharing it all with you. So make sure and use the code KARMA to order your box and be able to make these with me. I don't get anything from it, but you get a 10% discount when you order. All the subscription information will be in the video description box along with that code KARMA to get 10% off. So we will be doing two projects today. One will be Yarrow Recovery Salve and the other will be to start our Yarrow Tincture. So stay tuned while we learn about Yarrow and make those two projects. No, me. Take the time to dig deep Underneath this red heat We could really meet And remember to stay till the end because I've just made my very first farm cheddar cheese that's on the rack drying and I want to show it to you at the end of the video. So hang tight at the end and let me know what you think of my first cheddar cheese. Yarrow has a deep medicinal history and fossilized yarrow has even been found in a Iraq at Neanderthal burial caves dating back 60,000 years ago. Now yarrow's Latin name is Achillea mellifolium and it's said to be named after Achilles who took it into the Trojan Wars with him in 1200 BC, and he used it to help stop the bleeding of his wounded warriors. Today, yarrow has many contemporary uses, including being taken internally as a tea to stimulate digestion. It can be also used externally for different kinds of inflammatory skin conditions. The tonic astringent action of yarrow supports normal menstrual cycle and helps reduce excess bleeding and can ease menstrual cramps. So part of the booklet talks about growing the yarrow and harvesting because remember they give you your seeds and your packet to be able to grow it. There is in there an identification warning that's extremely important because there are two other herbs if you're out foraging in the wild trying to find yarrow that can be mistaken for yarrow. So one of those is Queen Anne's Lace and the other is Poisoned Hemlock. So I'm going to take just a second and show you some pictures and let you know the difference of that in case you're foraging. Foraging in the wild takes extra practice and you should get some field guides to help you look for and know the differences between poisonous and non-poisonous. Also, Go on any herb hikes that are available in your area to learn the poisonous things that grow. So the first here is Queen Anne's Lace or Wild Carrot. And you don't have to be as worried about it. It is not uh, poisonous to animals or humans and the carrots at the bottom can be eaten. But the second one is Poison Hemlock and it is definitely poisonous to humans. But you will notice on the stem there there are purple blotches on the stem and that will tell you that it's poison hemlock. You'll especially see them where the leaves attach to the stem. I did forage these wild. These are from my yard though and I did throw out the seeds and I could also look and make sure that it was yarrow and this is common yarrow that I have dried. Now if you are foraging it you can cut it at more at the top of the flowers than I did say about right here and that will encourage that yarrow to bloom again but these were honestly on my in my yard and we were getting ready to mow the lawn and so I wanted to pick what I could. You can use the leaves as well as the flowers. So let's get our water starting simmering in our double broiler. And remember in your double broiler, you want the water in there down at the bottom to simmer, not to boil. And you don't want the bottom of your pan touching 
the water in the bottom. And you'll be simmering this in our double broiler. And remember, you can use a crock pot as well with a water heat jug down in there. They've got directions on how to do that, or you can look in Google or previous videos I've given you. But we're gonna start by making an herbal infusion. And we are making a salve with this, so Yarrow Recovery Salve as well as we'll be starting a tincture. I won't be finishing it because it will be sitting there for four to six weeks before I strain it and put it into the jar. But there will be other videos that show that and you'll see how I strain the herbs from the oil, which is the same process of straining the herbs from the alcohol and putting it into the tincture bottle. One of the most powerful ways to make this would be to put the almond oil and the herb into a bottle and put it in a cool dark area for four to six weeks. And that really just gives a lot of time for that to infuse the oil. And it also, for those of you that like the moon cycle, can go from new moon to new moon. And a lot of people feel like that is a great way to infuse the oil with the yarrow. But we're going to be doing the faster method, which would be to use the crock pot or your Instapot or a double boiler like I'm using here. And when we do it that way, we can actually um, infuse it for about one to three hours, and then we'll have our infused oil and then ready for the next step to make the sap. Okay, I turned this up a little bit to kind of get it going and then we'll turn it down and make sure it's just simmering. But while we're waiting for that to heat up, let's go ahead and start our tincture. Now, this is gonna be our final jar with the tincture, um, and we're going to be doing, um, I'm gonna do the folk method. It actually has the method, uh, and as, a, as I go further in the videos and in my naturopath program, I'll start to teach you more specific ways to use the alcohol to herb ratio that will give you an exact science in the medicine so that you'll know the strength but for right now, I'm going to actually just do the folk method. And so I'm going to take some of my yarrow here and I'm just gonna use this extra instead of the yarrow that I have from them. And I'll use their bag to fill it back up. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my yarrow from my yard in there and I'm gonna pack it in, oh, probably about three quarters of the way because yarrow is pretty light and so and these are completely dried. When you're doing this, you wanna make sure and use only dried herbs. Otherwise, if you're using herbs with water in them, it can potentially cause mold while you're doing it. I'm just gonna squeeze those down in there. I'll kind of show you how much I've used. So I won't have an exact uh, recipe, but for what I'm using it for, it will be just fine. So I'm kind of just packing it down in there so I can see how much probably do. Oh, it smells so good. So I've got about two thirds packed in there. That's what I'm gonna go with for this. Mm, it smells so good. Whoops. And so then I've got vodka, and the vodka, you just want anything that's at least 80 proof. And all I'm going to do is then I'm going to pour in the vodka. Let's see if I can turn it so you can see. And I'm just gonna fill it all the way up to the top. Now, if the vodka starts to go down while you're waiting, you can add more vodka if you want. I like to leave the little lip so that I can kind of shake it. So I try and go visit it and shake it. So pretty. Look how pretty that is before I put the thing on it. Not pretty. It's so pretty. Okay. Then I put these little wax cloths on that I just covered with a little bit of beeswax, and that just kind of saves your lids from the alcohol ruining them. Then you just tighten down the lid on that and then 
I like to shake it up. And like I said, you're gonna go by and you're gonna shake it up. I go check it, you know, every couple of days or so, and you'll just shake that up. So that's gonna go in a cool, dark place for four to six weeks. I usually leave mine about four, but six is fine too. I put the beginning date on there so that I kind of know as I'm shaking it when, uh, when it's ready to come out. And then all I'm going to do is use a muslin bag like this and I can reuse these bags so I can wash them. And I'm gonna throw this in here, put it into a bowl, because that's the easiest way. And put all the herbs and the alcohol in there, squish it out till I have just the infused alcohol, which is the tincture. Then I will use a funnel and put it into the tincture jar. And because I usually end up with more than one jar, I have actually gotten my own bottle to go with this so that I have an extra bottle there to use for my tincture. So I won't be showing the end of that, but I wanted to explain to you how we're going to finish that tincture. So for now, I'm gonna take this and put it in a cool dark place. Um, well, for now, I'll leave it right here but I am going to put that eventually in a cool dark place when we're finished. Now our water is simmering. It's actually boiling, so I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit more because you really don't want it boiling. You just want it simmering. So I'll check that again in just a second to see. But we're gonna start here with our sweet almond oil and put it in the pan. And those of you that have watched my videos before know that I saved these bottles because I have my recipe in my book and I can just use more almond oil. Ooh, what was that? Ooh, that was scary. Okay, sorry. Know that I keep this uh, bottle so that it's pre-measured. All right. And then we're going to add the yarrow that's in the jar. And remember, they always give us extra yarrow to fill it back up. So while we start this cooking or infusing, I will fill this back up in just a second. For now, let's get this all in the nice almond oil and start infusing. You can see in there, there are flowers and it's also got the leaves and stems cut and sifted in there as well. And that's just fine. Like I said, it's one of those plants that you can use all of it. Check it, make sure. Oh, that's perfect. Just simmering exactly where we want it. I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer. We're gonna do three hours. So now while we're letting that heat up, we can fill back up our jar. I love that they give us extra herb. Let's see. Okay, there we go. filled back up and we still have probably at least another one so probably filled this jar three times so you could definitely make your recovery salve and like I said we'll end up with more salve than than we need in this and I have made another bottle like I did last time for the excess salve as well then we have a little bit of tea tree essential oil now in here, there's quite a bit of tea tree. I'd say probably more than 10 drops. Um, a lot of people will use about 10 drops in this uh, size of a tin, which is a two ounce tin. Uh, I'm gonna use about half of it in the tin and well, probably about 10 drops in the tin. And then I'll probably end up using 10 or so, maybe even 20 
in this bigger jar that I have for the excess just to have some that has a little bit stronger tea tree oil and a, one that has a little bit less tea tree oil. Now sometimes they'll have you put it in during the recipe and on this one it actually tells you to let it cool down a little bit and then add the essential oil. But in my natural path pack class, my teacher um, has us put the oils directly into the tins. He says by the time the waxy mixture hits the tin, uh, it will be cool enough that it won't affect the essential oils badly. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put those in the tin to wait. Maybe I'll wait. I'm gonna go ahead and wait. I'm gonna set it right here so I remember. But I'm gonna wait to put them in until later because the tea tree oil um, is strong just sitting there in the jar. Now your herbal infusions will last you about 18 months. So if you just want to infuse some of the oil and use it, you can use it directly on your skin. You can use it to make creams or lotions or ointments like we're making today. You can also use the yarrow and the tea bags to use as tea, because remember that's gonna help you a lot with digestion. Okay, so we're gonna let this, I'm gonna keep stirring this and coming back and watching it while it infuses for three hours. And I'll see you back after we're ready to go on. Welcome back, welcome back. We've just finished up here. So it's nice and all in there. Now you can grind um, with a mortar and pestle or you can also put them in a small blender and blend these before you put them in the oil. But especially with yarrow, it's such a fine flour and stuff like that that usually just your um, just your stirring it and stuff during the process is enough. Okay, so we can turn this off and get a hot pad. And move this. Oh, we're gonna need this in just a minute. So it won't move yet. Let me see if I can turn it sideways so you can see what I'm doing more. So here I've got my bag and I'm just going to carefully pour this in. Remember it's hot. So you want to be careful pouring it so that you don't get burned. can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Sometimes I'll put it like over a jar or something and it'll be a little bit easier. Now if somehow some of this does get down in the um, oil, you can strain the oil again. to get all the goodness out. Okay, and then we'll rinse that out before we start the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for just a minute and let the oil come out while I clean out this pan. And I am gonna wipe these down. get any of the water out of there so I don't end up with water in my salve. Now this has cooled down just a little bit so when I squeeze I won't burn my fingers too badly.
Just keep squeezing to get as much of that oil out as you can. Okay. Me. I like to use all that good oil. I did see just a tiny bit that got in there. I'm not going to worry about it. There's just a tiny few little yarrows in there. Okay, so now we're going to put this back up here and turn it back on. And it's already hot, so I'm just going to turn it up to, like, on this, I usually end up at about a two. Two out of six is max. And then we're going to put this back in here. Oops, let me wipe this okay and like I said there are just a couple of little yara drops in there but I'm okay with that we'll put our infused oil back in if I wanted to get those out I could just restrain it one more time starting to heat up. Um, they did give us a full bar of beeswax. This is two ounces. You only need one ounce of beeswax. I have half left over from my box before, so I'm just going to use that. I'm going to put this back in my uh, supplies box to be able to make some more later. Now remember, we are going to use the tea tree oil. So I'm going to start with 10 drops in my tin. Now scents are very personal. So you can add more or less depending on your... Quite half. And I do like putting them in the tin and then they just incorporate with. Okay, and I'll put the rest in here. And this is just starting to melt. It's gonna take it a while. Go ahead and take this lid off. This is not really coming out drop by drop. Okay. Just kind of split it between the two. It's just starting to melt. I'm just going to kind of stir it as it's starting to melt. It'll start to melt slowly at first and then it will kind of go faster and faster. So you just keep watching it. Now this uh, ointment will last, it says, about 18 months. Um, I will tell you that I actually have salves that I've kept for over almost three years. They still have been very effective for me and not a problem. Um, what might happen is the, uh, if, like I use olive oil a lot to infuse my herbs, and the olive oil will start to go rancid, so you'll kind of have that smell of rancid oil. 
but um, rancid olive oil is not bad for you. So there's no problem with that, even if it kind of has that little rancid smell in your salves. I still use them and I still find that I get great benefit from them. Okay, so it's starting to melt now, going pretty fast. Like I said, once it starts to melt, it starts going pretty fast. So we're almost to the end, you can see it. Just continuing to melt there. Almost gone. Okay, there we go. Now it's completely dissolved and ready to be put into the tins. So we can just turn off the heat now. And put this down. Let me move this out of the way now. Okay. Let's get our first tin ready and our second tin ready. And I do like using the glass jars because basically it, um, you can use it over and over again. With these tins, you can use them a couple of times and wash them in the dishwasher or wash them by hand, but they start to uh, rust over time. So. I like using the spatula because it gets every last little bit of it. Now, because um, that is a salve, I do like to, uh, I do like to um, get soap and hot water in that pan immediately so that it doesn't harden up on the side of the pan. So now we've got our salves. They just sit here for a few hours until they turn solid, and then we can put our lids on them, and they will be ready to go. So I'll be back when they're all set up to show you. While we're waiting for that to set up, how about I show you my farm cheddar cheese that I made? I'm like so proud. I actually have two different blocks that I made. And those of you that have been watching kind of know that I'm doing a new milk, raw milk um, exchange. So I get raw milk, two gallons every week. This is the cheddar cheese that I made. Look at that beautiful block of cheese. So right now it's just drying. You can kind of see how it's um, got a little bit of a yellow kind of rind and is kind of drying out on the top. And I'm letting it sit here for about three to five days. And then I'll rub it down with butter. And then in about three, well, they say three to five weeks, but I'm gonna go ahead and try this at three weeks because I'm not a super sharp cheddar fan, but that's my first cheddar cheese. Here's a little cheese montage. I used this small form as well as a juice presser I had, but the bottom uh, is too low, so I had to put those canning lids in to lift it up high enough so that the whey would drain. And this is them coming out of the press, and there they are. What do you think? Let me know if you're interested at all in learning. I've been making cheddar cheese, uh, I haven't made cottage cheese yet, but I've made feta, and I've made ricotta, and I've made yogurt, and I've made butter, and mozzarella. 
So those are the cheeses and stuff I've made so far. And here are our salves that have now dried and are ready to be capped and used for all the wonderful things that Yarrow does for us. I hope you enjoy being with me today while we learned a little bit about Yarrow and its medicinal uses. Thanks so much. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up and to subscribe if you haven't already. And remember, come back often to the channel where you can say, Karma's my friend. Bye, y'all.